my name is Jonathan Wilson. I'm one of the consultant general and colorectal surgeons with an interest in laparoscopic or keyhole surgery at One While Back. I perform amongst the various techniques that we do here, keyhole and traditional open surgery for both abdominal wall and groin hernias. A hernia is essentially when the muscular or the, the tough containment becomes weak and a hole develops and then the contents of that structure are able to herniate through the gap. So the example being in the abdominal wall, we develop a weakness or a hole in the muscular wall and then perhaps some of the bowel or the intestine or the fat within the abdomen is able to herniate through that hole, causing a visible swelling or pain in that site. So there are various hernias that can affect the anterior abdominal wall and the groin. And starting from the top, the first one is known as an epigastric hernia. And this gets its name from the anatomical region situated between the breastbone and the belly button, which is known as the epigastrium. And often these are situated in the midline, where we develop a weakness or a small hole in the anterior abdominal wall. And then usually some of the fat within the abdomen is able to protrude through that gap, causing a small bulge or a lump in the epigastric region. It's sometimes referred to as a ventral hernia. That's a, a term which is interchangeable with epigastric. Then we have hernias in and around the belly button. Ones that we're born with are known as umbilical hernias. And the ones that we develop during adulthood just to the side of the belly button are known technically as para-umbilical hernias. Then moving down into the groin, there are two types of hernias affecting the groin. There is the inguinal or inguinal and the femoral hernia, which is just below the groin crease. The other type of hernia that we can see in somebody that's had an operation where there is a scar, there can be a weakness that develops within the scar leading to a bulge and that is known as an incisional hernia, which is simply a consequence of a previous surgery and scar. The one type of hernia that, that warrants a mention, although it is not a hernia of the anterior abdominal wall or the groin, is known as a hiatus hernia. And this is something that's often diagnosed during a gastroscopy, where we do, we're doing a fiber optic assessment through the mouth, the esophagus, and into the stomach, is when we see a, a weakening in the diaphragm muscle as the esophagus goes through the diaphragm into the abdominal cavity. If that passageway is weakened, some of the stomach can ride up into the chest and actually sit within the thoracic cavity. So that is a definite hernia, but it is quite a complex type of hernia and not something that we'd be, we would be fixing as day case surgery at one well back. So broadly, hernias can present either in childhood, where there is a congenital, or that simply means a defect in the muscle that you're born with, or as wear and tear as we get a bit older, we can develop the weaknesses in the abdominal wall presenting in our 20s, 30s or beyond. The type of uh, individuals that would be prone to hernias are several. If somebody's doing a lot of heavy lifting, either manual laborers uh, whose who day-to-day job would be lifting heavy weights or people lifting heavy weights in the gym, people who are putting chronic strain in the abdominal walls, such as chronic coughs, people with emphysema, bronchitis, bad hay fever, constantly coughing, sneezing, patients who have chronic constipation or men with enlarged prostates who may need to generate force to pass urine, chronic cough due to smoking, all of these things put, put a day-to-day -day increased strain in the abdominal wall musculature as, to, as opposed to people who don't have those conditions. The classic presentation of a hernia is a visible lump uh, either in the groin or in the regions of the abdomen that we've described. Uh, the patient will, will no normally notice these in the shower or bathing or when they're getting dressed and they see a lump that wasn't there the day or the, or the week before. Sometimes it can be slightly more obscure than that. There may not be an obvious lump, uh, and the patient may describe a, a sensation or a dragging sensation or a pain or just a localized phenomenon that wasn't there the week or the month before. And 
it, the doctor may not even feel a lump at that stage. The, these are one of the types of hernias that can be difficult to detect in the clinical setting and may require an, a test or an investigation to confirm the diagnosis. These lumps will generally be more obvious when the patient's standing up or straining and will usually go away when the patient lies flat. So you can have a small hernia where the actual hole in the muscle is quite small that is disproportionately painful. And you can have a rather large uh, groin hernia filling the scrotum, which doesn't cause much in the way of symptoms at all. But as a rough rule of thumb, as, as the years go by and the hernia gradually gets bigger, they will generally get more symptomatic. If you are worried that you may have an abdominal or a groin hernia, go and see your GP. You know, don't assume that it is a small hernia, which can be ignored because you may be right, but equally, uh, there may be some factors about that hernia that would lead a, a GP or a hernia surgeon to strongly recommend surgical correction. So we don't expect patients to be Googling and classifying their hernia and then looking up the, the relevant management of that. I, I would prefer patients to either go directly to a specialist at a facility such as One Wellbeck or let their GP examine uh, and make a relevant referral if necessary. Because as I've said, not only if patients choose not to, to seek medical help, they have to live with the symptoms that that hernia is, is producing on a day-to-day -day basis. They may often, if patients have been living with a hernia for many months, they will already have stopped playing tennis or golf or whatever it is they enjoy doing. Their hobbies and recreations will have been put on hold. Uh, so why not just get the professional opinion early, hear from the horse's mouth, you know, what is the correct way of managing this? And if appropriate, uh, a short wait for a, a day case, minimally invasive repair by surgeons at, at the top of their profession um, in, a, in a lovely new facility such as One Wellback.